Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. So, if you're watching this, you've probably experienced blisters under your paper tape. So anyone who has just gone ahead and watched some cheesy video and tried to tape after has probably realized that it's not as easy as it looks. Okay, so first let's look at why people might be getting blisters under their paper tape. Number one is the mud is way too dry. So they're probably buying one of those little pails of ready mix mud and it's super dry and crusty and crumbly and then they apply it onto the drywall and it starts drying out because the drywall is sucking all the moisture out of it and then they start kind of mashing the tape on, jam all the mud out of it and get it done looking like it did in that video they watched. And then you think you might have done a pretty good job but when you go over to coat it you see blisters all through the tape and you go, what did I do wrong? Okay, so yes, mud too dry is number one. Moving too slow is number two. Number three is probably you're taking too much of the mud out. So you might be like wiping over and over and over again. And that's pulling all the adhesive out. The mud is your adhesive. And number three is just getting voids underneath the tape. So like applying the mud really poorly. So now that we've talked a lot, I'm gonna install some tape. I'm gonna do it the wrong way. I'm gonna do it the right way. And then after we're gonna have a bunch of blisters. So we'll coat the tape after and we'll show you how to fix all those blisters. And I'll show you if maybe it's beyond repair and you need to just rip this stuff out and start over. First, let's do this. And I tried to make a video doing this already and I ended up actually sticking the tape down well, which was ridiculous. But so the only thing I could think is to like do it really poorly and actually leave voids. So yeah, we'll do this like we're doing a nice knockdown texture. <laughs> Even that, I might have to manufacture a few blisters here because I bet you as I wipe this out, it's gonna spread evenly and the tape will stick again and ruin this take of the video as well. Shut up, phone. Okay, so let's put that on there. Oh yeah, see already I'm starting to actually get too much mud. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Even though it's brutal, we're gonna leave it. Okay, so we've got this one, which is just an uneven spread, really bad. So let's do another one where we don't have enough mud put down. So somebody's gone and they're trying to get a nice even layer, but they're not quite putting enough mud. So see right here how there's actually no mud? That could really easily happen to somebody. No, I'm not gonna check your message. You could really easily be spreading what looks like an even amount of mud, but there's actually not enough mud under there. So now let's put that down. And let's just wipe the crap out of it. Cause you know, you want your tape sitting so flat to the wall. Cause you know, building the wall out is just not an option because we're doing drywall and everything has to be flat, right? Wrong. Drywall is about making large, long, imperceptible humps in the wall. Drywall is not flat, folks. Know that. Okay, so let's do this properly once just to give you a little bit of an idea. So we'll spread the mud out pretty nice and even. I can tell I've got about an eighth of an inch. It's consistent all the way. And speed is the key here. In that you don't want your mud drying out on you because it's gonna lose adhesion as it's drying out. Okay, so let's take a close look. You can see there's mud coming out of both sides. I know there's no voids here because it was super evenly spread. And I'm not pressing as hard as it looks. So we're gonna go over it one more time. So I didn't spend too long doing that. And you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of build up there. There's some mud under the tape, but that's what I want. So right there, I've got about a 16th of an inch. Right there, I got about a 16th of an inch. So I've gotta build it out, but I know there's mud under here sticking it down. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow and we'll see how this all works out and I'll show you how to actually fix those blisters. 
How'd you get mud all over your face? I, I don't know. Okay, so we've got our dry, bubbly tape. And you know, I had to try pretty hard to get these blisters in here. So let's take a listen. Get up right up close here and listen to what it sounds like. You can hear when there's a blister. So like, let's listen to this one first. It all sounds the same. When you get here, there's a hollow sound. You can hear there's a blister there. It sounds like that, right? Oh, right here, that'll be a good one. So we're gonna have some good blisters to fix here. So I can teach you guys how to fix this. First, let's coat everything. We're gonna leave this one, the one that I taped well, and I'm gonna coat these two. And then we're gonna leave it and wait for the blisters to form because you don't always see them right away. Oh, you do in this case. I did a really nice bad job. All right, there's some good ones here. Look at these blisters. They're pretty glorious, aren't they? So I had to work pretty hard to actually make these blisters happen. How about on this one? I think there's one, but even the one where I tried to wipe all the mud out isn't actually that bad. So this crack right here is actually, when you have mud really thick, it will crack at the liftoffs because the liftoff is the thickest point. And that's often why we use quick set is to avoid it cracking. Quick set doesn't shrink or crack the same way. So this happened from shrinkage. We just had a fan going on this for a while. And if your tape looks like this all over the place, you may actually want to rip it out, sand it all down and redo it. However, in this case, if you've got, if most of your tape is all good and just a few spots look like this, here's what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need a nice sharp knife. And, okay, here's a little one. So you're gonna have to check the area all around. You know, okay, well that's where the blister actually is. So you're gonna have to carve it out. Oh, need a bit more out there. And you can do this right after you coat it and you notice it, but you'll have to coat the whole joint again right away. Or you can wait like this, you can wait until the joints dry, which is probably gonna be the easiest method. Okay, so this, is that taken out? Again, if it's just an isolated spot, it's no problem doing this. If you've got this all over the place, you've gotta start over. Okay, so we pulled it out. Oh, we got another one right here. And I can see a little bit right there, so I'm gonna go around. Same right here. And I'm being very gentle, because I really don't wanna score the drywall very much. If I'm cutting the drywall a lot, then I'm creating a weak spot in the drywall itself, but with the amount of mud that's gonna be covering this, it's very unlikely that that tiny little score is ever gonna crack or show up later. Okay, so don't forget to check, right? Use your ears to figure out if you've actually gotten all of the blister out. All right, I can hear it's still a little bit more right there, so I gotta go a little bit further. You want to be going all the way into the adhered tape. The best thing to do is before you do your next coat. So give it some time, right? You want to do this, just fill them in like so. You want to do this, just fill them in like so. All right, so these have now had a chance to dry. As you can see, it's actually looking pretty decent. Like it's filled in. But you know what? I think we need to sand this board so that we can get it smoother. Have a little lime for your lawn. This is one of the more bizarre things somebody could see me doing out here. Okay, that's looking a lot better. Let's coat this now. Oh, getting more mud on the washing machine.
Maybe we should coat them both, huh? Oh, is that one of those little... I got one of those little things I cut out in my mud. Huh. So we don't need to load it so heavy. This is just your skim coat. Let's polish that. So I don't see anything else coming up here and it's looking pretty good. So that's how you fix blisters under paper tape. So let's quickly go over what could be causing those one more time. So maybe your mud is way too dry. You're using it straight out of the bucket or straight out of the box and it's staying on the board too long and you're taking too long to wipe it out. And so it, the glue just doesn't have a chance to get into the tape, even though you've probably been playing with it for too long. Okay, the next thing is a really poor spread. And as you can see, I had to try really hard to spread the mud poorly enough to actually get all those blisters. Because this one, even though I thought I did that, is actually sitting down looking pretty good. Although I know there's a blister hiding under there. And the third reason might be that you're actually not putting enough mud on and you're wiping all the mud out from underneath the tape and so it's got nothing left to bind it. So let's see what this piece of tape does when I try and rip it up. This is just light all-purpose mud and I'm curious as to how well it's actually stick the tape down. And it's, it's good, like that's good. So this is just lightweight all purpose. Oh, there we go. That's more what I'm used to. Here it's sticking down pretty good. But you know, it's definitely holding quite well. You can see all that doing that. Let's see where it, what it looks like where I wiped lots more mud out. Although this is at a chance to get a bit wet. Now there's that blister I was looking for. So even still, even though I wiped so hard to try and get all that out, there was still enough mud under there to hold this tape down. So you have to try pretty hard to mess this up. So as you can see, if you're using even moderately good taping methods, paper tape is actually pretty user friendly. It's just when people go trying to install paper tape with very little information or even worse, bad information from the internet, then you're going to get into a heap of trouble and have tapes that look like that. So if you follow a lot of the simple methods I have and use the right muds and tape the right way, you're not going to get these kind of blisters. But anyways, that's how you fix them if you do have them. So thanks for checking out Vancouver Carpenter. Feel free to subscribe, leave a comment, like, all that YouTube-y stuff, because I am trying to grow this channel, you know. I just don't usually like to tell you guys. Takes a quick hand to get this part right. Captain Spackle, teaching you how to fix your spackle.